What's up buddies, you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff and if you shoot product video or you want tips for shooting B-roll in general, then you're in the right place. If you're new and you enjoy this free content, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe, that's the best way to support the channel. Thank you kindly. Now, let's do it. The number one tip for shooting product B-roll is, if you say it, show it. I don't know about you, but if I'm watching a product review video and something is mentioned and there's no footage to show what the person's talking about, I find that quite frustrating. A good example of, of this say it, show it mantra is in my video review of the Aperture F7 LED light, which I'll link below if you wanna check that out. I filmed the whole of the sequence where I talk about the product and then when I watched the footage back, I took notes of any time I mentioned a feature of the product. This gave me a really good shot list to work from and meant I was able to match every single feature I spoke about with some footage. And that just makes for a really way more interesting looking video to watch. Next, let's get creative. Something I love doing in my B-roll is stop motion. It's surprisingly easy and looks really unique. Here's a little sequence I put together and as you can see, I snap a photo and then I make a small movement to the product. Luckily with the horizontal movement, I was able to follow the grain of the wood of the desk. As you can see, I started rotating the lens and it went past the midpoint and I kept the rotation going and I had it moving back to the midpoint. I'm only moving the lens millimeters at a time and I'm snapping lots of photos. I then kept the rotation of the lens moving with the lens cap and it unscrews itself, jumps on top of the lens, does a bit of a pivot. In this case, I'm gonna drop this into a 24 frames per second project and I'm gonna be shooting over 100 photos, so it's gonna be just over four seconds long. Finally, you can see the lens cap drops into place. And then again, here's the final result. Looks pretty cool, I like that. Now let me show you how I put it together in Lightroom and Final Cut Pro. So I've imported all the raw files into Adobe Lightroom and I'm gonna start by editing the very last photo. Let's center it up and of course make it 16 by nine aspect ratio so it conforms with your video. Just a couple of other color tweaks, make sure the white balance looks okay. Once we're done, we want to copy the settings of this photo. And of course, we want to make sure we select all of the parameters so we can copy it across to every single photo so they all look the same. Select them all and then hit sync. That will do exactly what you expect. All we need to do then is export the photos and then we can drop them into our video editor. In this case, I'm using Final Cut Pro, but you can do it in any of them. So I've dropped them into our timeline and in Final Cut, it assumes that each photo needs to be a few seconds long. That's way too long for us, obviously. So I'm gonna select all of them by hitting Command A and then I'm gonna hit Control D to change the duration of every single clip. And then all we need to do is hit one to indicate that we want each photo to be one frame long. And there we have our stop motion video. Lastly, I like to be organized, so I'm gonna select all the photos, right click and select new compound clip, and this just keeps things tidy for your project. Just to say, I like 24 frames a second for stop motion, but it's up to you. I know that means a lot more photos than if you were to use, say, 15, which is used a lot professionally. So yeah, I say experiment, try 60 frames a second to make super smooth, buttery looking stop motion. The choice is yours. A similar method that I use really frequently is to use a kind of pseudo stop motion by filming video and unpacking a product from its box. I then make small adjustments to the position of the products I'm featuring and then make hard cuts in editing to make it look a little bit more like stop motion. What you have the product doing is entirely up to you, of course, but there are three things to keep in mind that will help. One, use a really sturdy tripod and a delayed shutter on your camera. The last thing you want is any kind of movement of your frame. Two, you really want to be in full manual mode in your camera and that includes white balance. Trust me, even small differences in your exposure or color will be really noticeable. And three, use things like blue tack or sticky tape behind the product to help you uh, keep the movements really constant. Um, it makes a really surprising difference. Probably my favorite tool for B-roll is a slider. I use a Rhino slider and I just love it so much. You can find slider shots on almost every gear opinion video I've ever done. So you can do the simple back and forth type shot, which is always good, but not the most creative. 
I've actually got the motorized component for the Rhino Evo slider and with this I quite like doing a dolly in or out movement. It looks pretty cool. If you've got a camera with good tracking autofocus then you can even do a simulated dolly zoom effect. To do this all you need to do is to film a dolly in shot on a motorized slider with a constant speed. It's best if you turn the speed ramping off so it's just constant. I like to use a fairly wide angle lens for a more pronounced look. And then in editing, simply crop your video at the beginning of your clip and keyframe it to slowly return to that original crop. I hope that makes sense. So when you're able to film repeatable moves with a motorized slider, you can do shots like this, where I filmed the same movement several times and I added in different items on each pass. In editing, all you have to do is stack the clips on top of each other, line them up, and then fade from one to the next. Looks super cool. I also love the first person B-roll view. I just stand behind the camera as if you're picking up the product and looking at it yourself. Of course, this is better with a wider angle lens because it gives a more real and personal feeling aesthetic. My last tip is to use, or in my case, probably overuse titles in your B-roll. It just helps to clarify what you're talking about. And plus, there are some incredible ones out there. My personal favorites are the Motion VFX M callouts packs, which are so professional looking. Plus, you can track objects with it. It looks tricky, but it's actually insanely easy to do. I use the regular callouts pack and also the M callouts specs pack, which is specifically designed for products. Check out the links below, they'll lead you straight to the plugins. You can see here just how well these plugins track objects, and that's largely because they use the Mocha engine, which is extremely powerful. I was thinking of doing a review and tutorial of the M Callout Specs pack. If that's of interest, definitely let me know in the comment section below and give this video a thumbs up, that way I know. Of course, you don't necessarily need these fancy plugins to get good looking results. With a well planned shot, you can get some really good looking results just with the stock plugins in your editing software. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today, and I hope you found this helpful and interesting. If you're not subscribed to my channel, then it would mean a lot to me if you could. Just hit the blob, I'll put it just here. And I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel, of which YouTube recommends this one for you, and the one underneath will be my latest upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.